Welcome back to Opsley Automotive. I'm Austin, and today's video is going to be on my 1985 Dodge B150 Royal passenger van. Let's take a closer look. So like I said, this is a video on my 1985 Dodge B150 Royal. I've been after a short wheelbase passenger van for quite a while. It's really hard to find this combination of short wheelbase with two back seats. Now you can find them with one back seat, but to find two seems to be pretty tough. Not a lot of people ordered them that way. I'm guessing because if they wanted to haul more passengers, they probably wanted more space in the back for luggage and whatnot. Um, so these are kind of hard to find. I lucked out and found this one in South Carolina. It was only a couple hours away, so I blasted out there and bought it. Uh, there is a previous video on this van showing getting it and the kind of first look at the van. Um, I had to do a little bit of work. Uh, I noticed that one of the freeze plugs was weeping, so I replaced that because um, you don't really want your coolant leaking out of your van, and it uh, wasn't too bad of a job. That freeze plug looks like it's leaking a little bit. Oddly enough, it looks like the other freeze plugs might actually be new. They just didn't replace that one. Or maybe it wasn't leaked when they were replacing the others. We'll do a uh, screwdriver test. Well, it's not too terribly rotten because I can't punch a screwdriver through it, but just tapping it like that has caused it to start dripping. So, I guess we're gonna go on, on that one being bad. Yep, she's running out now. So I'll go ahead and replace that. I have a couple sets of these expand tight freeze plug sets. So I'm gonna borrow one of them out of here um, so I can fix this van right now instead of waiting to order just one. All right, got that new freeze plug in. Had to move this support bracket there to be able to get to it with the uh, driving tool. But that should stop that leak that I was having and won't leave me on the side of the road. I uh, had to fix an exhaust leak and, you know, I had to put some new wipers on it. Uh, just little things like that. I also put a new receiver hitch on the back because this van didn't have a hitch and I plan on using this to tow things. So... Um, I will have a video coming on after this one showing how to install that hitch. Uh, pretty straightforward, um, so check that out. Um, but like I said, trying to find one of these short wheelbase vans with the two seats proved to be difficult. So I was glad I was able to find this one. Mileage is low, and all in all, I think it's going to be a good one. Uh, currently, I've put 1,255 miles on this van since I've owned it and haven't had any trouble. Um, so... I'm just going to keep driving it. I think I will have to change the valve stem seals in the future. Um, that's really about the only thing I've seen that is kind of questionable. Um, otherwise, I'm just going to kind of maintain it. Uh, I did wax the whole thing with just cheap turtle wax I had sitting on the shelf. Um, I, I originally was just uh, going to do the front fender to see how nice the paint would shine up. And then I kind of just kept going. And um, then the next thing I know, the whole thing was nice and shiny. And um, did a little test spot here on the fender. And this is just some uh, turtle wax. You can really see that paint shined up really nice. Compare it to the lower fender and the door. 
I don't want to get too crazy with a machine buffer because the paint's kind of thin in spots. So I think I'll just hand polish it and see how that looks when it's done. I think it's going to come out pretty good. Well, as you can see, that did a pretty good job. Only problem is that's only one side of the van. And I gotta do the top, the other side, the front and the back. So I got a little more work cut out for me. Um, but I think it's worth it. I will eventually probably do a proper buffing on this thing and uh, make it look really good. And um, yeah. I think it's gonna be a good van. So let's look at some of the details and intricacies of this van and maybe get a closer look at this right here. Uh, I just think it's funny. Um, that's a bullet hole. So <laughs> I really wish I knew the story of this, um, but I don't. Um, so let's take a look. Yep, like I said, that's a bullet hole. You can see it entered there and whack. It's a raised portion there is probably where the bullet still is. So this van originally came from Georgia. Um, I don't know if this was a accident. I don't know if this was <laughs> something that happened when the driver of this van was just out and about. Um, I don't know. I'm just gonna leave it because it's kind of funny. Uh, people. Um, don't often have cars with bullet holes in it. So, yeah, it'll just be a nice conversation piece. Um, honestly, nobody's really noticed it, um, which is kind of funny, but yeah. How many of y'all have a vehicle that has a real bullet hole or bullet holes in it? Uh, be sure to comment. I'm kind of curious if anyone else has had a, a vehicle with one, because this is my first to have a gunshot. Um, in it. <laughs> now we can see here we got the barn doors on the side. And I will note that this van has door stops which are pretty handy because uh, I think my 73 van did not so these things just would flop back shut when you're trying to keep them open on a hill. Uh, this van also has an interior uh, nice headliner, door panels and such. So it is way quieter inside. Uh, the cargo van was loud and tinny and just echoed and was not very pleasant to drive for a long distance. This one's actually really nice. It has rubber flooring. Um, I'm kind of curious if that was um, common or not because honestly all the passenger vans I've seen have carpet. This is a B-150 Royal, which I'm gonna guess the rubber floor was standard and then carpet was optional, or maybe there was a higher trim package. I'm not well versed on these 80s vans, so I couldn't really tell you. Um, do have soft rubber step guards there and this aftermarket running board, which is literally running board exactly how I say it, running board. So anyways, uh, I wasn't too crazy about the look of it um, to be determined if I keep it on there or not. Um, there's one on both sides, but they're pretty well um, installed. I mean, if you look, there's some serious bracketry and stuff holding it on and uh, pretty sturdy. Uh, another feature of this van, um, <laughs> is the fact that these seats can be removed. Um, they have quick release, so you, on each front, there's a lever here you can lift up. So you lift these two levers up and the whole seat can come out. And that works on both the front and back seat, 
So you can make this a cargo van if you do need to haul something. So that's why I figured it was better to have one like this. That way I could use it as a cargo van if I needed, but more often than not, I'm using it as a passenger van. So this is a lot better for me. Um, and well, this van is just a lot nicer to drive, to be honest, than the 79 was. You can see that I got a lot of tools and stuff stored under the back bench seat there, so that's kind of handy. You can actually fit a lot of stuff in here because a lot of stuff can go under the seats, and the cargo area in the back, even though it's small, surprisingly spacious. Um, I'll show you that here shortly. Another thing is you can flip these seats around either way, so you can have these seats face each other if you wanted. Now, the owner's manual recommends having the seats forward if you're driving, so um, I guess not a lot of people probably do that, but I guess it would be handy if you were stopped somewhere or whatever. Um, some vans also were optioned with seats that folded into a bed, um, but I think it wasn't offered on the shorty. I think you had to have the next wheelbase um, to get that optional seat that could fold into a bed. One of the things I like about this van is you can go from the front of the van to the back without leaving the van. So it's handy if you want to get out, like I did at the beginning of this video, uh, onto the street uh, here, or the, I should say like the sidewalk here, instead of being out on the street. Um, just a little safer. Everyone can kind of come in this side door and not even use the uh, front doors if you desired. Who's on up here to the front? We got high back buckets in the front and we do have shoulder belts up front. We got the same motor cover that was in the 79 ashtray here. Very shallow cup holders that are kind of useless if you're driving. Here we got soft door panels. You can see here Royal engineered Ram Tough. Lock and glove box here. Not a whole lot of space in the glove box, but enough. Here's right, here's all your fuses and your um, easy access there. And there's the flasher. So really easy to get to if you need to check fuses. While we're in here, I guess we can look at the uh, paperwork. For some reason, this has an 86 um, owner's manual. I'm not sure if maybe it got lost. The original one got lost, and the dealer um, provided this one. I'm sure it's pretty much about the same information. Very detailed. Very, very much like a new car in terms of the information. There's sections in there about everything from car seats to cruise control. Um, we do have warranty information here. Bob Williams Dodge. We got the VIN number April 11th, 1985 is when this warranty started. You can see here 1985 warranty information. And you can see this van had a um, optional five-year, 50,000-mile service contract. So that's pretty good because that's what my new Dodge truck has. Um, the basic warranty was 12 months, 12,000 miles. So this is kind of neat to see. And there's all your information, blah, blah, blah. Buckle up for safety. There's when it got a, I guess a set of tires, maybe. Yep, premium radial ride tires at 40,365 miles. Let's see, balance four wheels and alignment, plus I guess the tires. $295.67. That was $929.1988. This was kind of neat. 
see here. Bob Williams Dodge and Auto Service. 1013 Martha Berry Boulevard, Rome, Georgia. I have to see if that still exists. You can see here this van was sold to Aaron A. Chastian. I think that's how you'd say that, Chastian. And he lived in Rome, Georgia. So I'm kind of interrupting the video for kind of a little bit of a update um, on the owner. I was doing some internet research and uh, discovered that the dealership typed up his last name wrong. It's not Chastian, it's actually Chastain. Um, they did write it correctly on the service contract. You can see there, Chastain. And um, that's the other receipt in here also had it spelt correctly. Um, during my research, I discovered that Aaron Andrew Chastain, I guess he was the second owner of this van and owned it until his death. Uh, he passed away July 25th, uh, 2020 at the age of 92. So he owned this thing a long time. Um, the cool thing that I discovered was one of his professions was a sign painter for Coca-Cola. Um, he painted signs on the sides of buildings and such back in the day, uh, which might explain the Coca-Cola keychain. Um, I thought that was kind of neat to read about that, then be like, oh, maybe that's why he had this keychain on the van. Um, he also worked for some other companies after Coca-Cola, mainly painting signs and doing things like that. In his free time, he was a, a talented painter, drawer, carver. Um, that's what he enjoyed doing. And um, after he retired, he actually started doing historical um, dioramas um, of scenes. So um, that was kind of neat to read about. I found an article online about his work and uh, you can actually see some examples of it at the um, Rome Area History Center in Rome, Georgia, obviously. So I'm probably going to check that out sometime when I'm in that area. Um, would be kind of neat just to see some of the stuff that this guy had done. Um, I might see if I could potentially get in touch with the family, uh, see if there's old photos, things like that. It's always really cool to me to find the history of these vehicles. And uh, I guess that means I'm technically the third owner of this van. So pretty cool. Um, always like finding the history and uh, it would be really cool if I could get some old photos and such, see the guy, maybe some photos of this van. I mean, if he owned it for so long, you know, there probably is some photos of it. So I'm gonna definitely try to do that and see if I can't get a little more history, maybe some more info on him and uh, maybe some pictures. So anyways, just thought I'd kind of slide this little segment in here since I discovered um, that they had this wrong and um, is the spelling of the name. So just wanted to keep that, you know, right and up to date. Um, so anyways, back to the video. Eight passenger B-150, used. And when this guy bought it, the van had 20,246 miles on it. And you can see here he traded in his 74 Buick LeSabre four-door, blue. And that car had 94,432 miles on it. Let's see how much this thing cost. So... This van was $10,500 used. We got $383.65 of tax. Then we got $25 title and license fees. They gave him $908.65 for his 74 Buick. So, oh, and paid, okay. Cash on delivery, $10,000. So it looks like the total price for this van was $10,908.65 and they gave him $908.65 which made his cash that he had to bring in even $10,000 and paid. 
That was December 12th, 1985. Have to look and see when this van was built, because I'd be curious um, when exactly he took it and took ownership of it, because this van would only have been like a year old, if that. So it looks like, oh, this van was made in Canada. Um, Chrysler Canada Limited, interesting. Was it built in Canada for the U.S.? Or did it somehow end up in Georgia from Canada? There's another thing here. Canada Transport. I'm not too sure if these were built in Canada for the U.S. or if this one's actually a Canadian vehicle that somehow ended up in Georgia. Anyways, looks like this was built April of 1985. So in eight months, this thing had 20 some thousand miles on it and was sold as a used van to the guy that was on that paperwork. So that's kind of interesting. Um, be curious about the whole Canada thing. Maybe somebody can chime in on that. Like I said, I'm not too well versed on my 80s Mopars. You can see here, service contract. Okay. And then we got a odometer mileage statement. So 20,246 miles. Neat. Too bad we don't have like an original um, window sticker or something to compare it with. And then there is a, a postcard it looks like. It's like some kind of farm, farm and implement show where they're showing new equipment and stuff. Sunbelt Agricultural Exposition. Extraordinary agricultural showcase with 600 exhibitors on 80 acres, attracting 200,000 visitors each October since 1978. I guess this is from 1990, so we got 1990, October 18th, 1920th. I have to look at Moultrie, Georgia. I know they have, they have, I think they have a swap meet in Moultrie, Georgia, so it must be on the same, I don't know, like fairgrounds or whatever. I wonder if this is still going on. I'll have to look that up. Oh, I did find this in the van when I bought it. Not sure where that goes. If somebody knows, let me know. Um, looks like it's something for a seat or a pedal or I don't know. Anyways. This van is equipped with factory air conditioning. Um, it does seem to still have a charge to it, but maybe not enough to kick on the compressor because it doesn't. Um, engage the compressor. This has a digital radio that kind of works when it wants to and other times doesn't. So I need to find a new one. Um, maybe one with a tape deck would be cool. Let's see if it wants to work today. works now but oh it's ah, kind of was working you can't switch between AM FM or I don't know it's it's messed up I need to get another one um, you can see here the heater and air condition controls this dash is pretty much the exact same dash that was in my 79. Um, we got our speedometer over here, which you'll notice it also has kilometers on it. So we got mile per hour, and then we have kilometer an hour in the orange. And you can see we got our 55 highlighted there. Uh, make sure you adhere to like the national speed limit. Um, you can see here I'm at 255. This is already rolled over once on the trip meter. So I've driven this van 1,000 miles and then now another 255 miles, so 1,255 miles total. 
Got our gas gauge, temp gauge. Here's our alternator and oil pressure. And there are some lights in here, one of which is if you turn the key on. Oh, it's not lighting up, but it'll say uh, fasten seat belts. Over here on the left side, we got our wiper control, which is delay wipers, like in my 79, exact same control. So you off there on the bottom, you click up, and then you can slide this up and down to control the speed of the delay. Then you have a low speed and a high speed. If you push it to the right, it's the windshield washer. Um, there's supposed to be um, jets on the wiper arms, but they're missing, so I'm gonna have to try to find some of those. Headlight switch, one click for park lights, two clicks for headlights. And then down on the floor, we got our dimmer switch. And then we got here our turn signal lever, which is also our cruise control. So off is to the left, one click is on. There's a button on the side that when you get to the speed, you see there it says set, you push that button in, let go, and then it'll set that speed. If you hit the brake or turn it off or whatever, you can then, if you want to resume, you slide this over to go back to that speed that you were set to. There's supposed to be a little tag here that says, you know, off, on, resume, and um, I need to find one to put back in there. Um, Actually, no, the, the one that's for it is in a glove box because I did find it. You can see we got our park and brake release here and then our hood release here. And our park and brake is just a foot actuated one down there. And you pull this to release it. Manual crank windows, which work really well. We got Vent windows here, push the button in, turn it. You can open those. Um, there is a floor vent on this side down here. You can see there is a slider lever there. You pull that towards you to open it. Um, there isn't one on this side, it looks like. So uh, maybe because all the air conditioned stuff, there's not one on the passenger side. Um, we do have an air conditioned vent here, the four in the center and one on that side. So I wanna to try to get the air condition working on this fan. You see we got our very, I guess you could have quintessential Mopar steering wheel of the 80s. They use these steering wheels in like everything. And we got our horn buttons down here on either side. So we gotta have the key on. This is a 318. So I will show you under the hood momentarily. Uh, coupled to a 727 automatic, but interesting thing is this van has a lockup torque converter. So you have your first three speeds and then you have torque converter lockup. So it's kind of like a four speed in a sense. Now to open the door, we got our pull handle here. We got our standard lock knobs for locking the doors. So to open this hood, there is a slide lever under here. Slide that to the right. And just like the other vans, there is a prop rod there. And a hole here to set it in. All this air conditioned stuff on this side, compressor, more air conditioned stuff. I did notice that the Air cleaner, I think, is missing its duct, and I believe there should be a duct that goes from there. And there's a like a snorkel that would go right here for fresh air. I'm pretty sure that's how it's supposed to be. I'm kind of wondering if they did that because maybe mice were getting in there or something. I don't know, but um, I want to try to find that snorkel and put that back in. I did put new belts on here, all new belts. 
Um, there's our oil dipstick for the engine, transmission dipstick, which, are, which is a very long one. <laughs> so that's the power brakes there. Here's our cruise control, engine coolant reservoir, windshield washer reservoir. And this thing does still have the air pump down there for emission stuff. I've left it on. Um, it still turns. So I will leave it on there. Um, Cause it's still there. So I ain't gonna remove it. Um, I did note that this thing has a plastic radiator. Um, I'm not sure if that's what these came with originally or if this has been replaced or anything like that. But I could see this having a plastic radiator in the eighties. That's about all that there is under the hood. Let's see, here's our vacuum hose diagram and our emission control info. Let's see here, we're already 5.2 liters. We're already talking about liters at this point in the 80s. So like I said, this is a 318 cubic inch V8. And I believe in these bands you can get the 318 V8 or the 225 slant 6. In order to shut these doors from the inside, you'll pull this one. And I like to pull this handle down, pull it closed and then lift it up to lock it. And then on this one, you just pull it shut. We do have pop-out windows. Two on the doors here. There's also one big one on this side. And the one in the back opens up as well. And a lock knob. In order to open it, just pull that out. And to open this, pull this down and push. This fan does have the optional Full width rear door. This thing is heavy as heck. I did have to uh, weld that back on because it broke off the uh, door stop there. There's my new hitch. In the back you see there's actually quite a bit of space. Um, I need to make a new maroon tire cover for the spare tire. I did have to get a new spare because the one that was in here was almost see-through. So I'll eventually make a new tire cover to match the interior. You can see plenty of space. So you can put all the tools and stuff under the seat. And then you have all this area back here to load up stuff. And it works really well. I've used this fan on some trips and filled this back up. And still have plenty of space up front. See the headliner's in good shape. We do have coat hook there, there, and there. So I guess you can hang a lot of stuff too. This one does have an interior pull handle too. Um, I guess if you're wanting to come out from this side, maybe if that back seat wasn't there. And lock knob. I would notice that the um, Gas cap is like a new car, plastic. I did fix this strap because it was broke. And it does have the flap in there too. So this fan is getting to be pretty much like your modern cars in terms of how it's set up. You can see unleaded fuel only. This thing has a catalytic converter. And there's the running board on this side. And it's a window van, so you can see out of it pretty good.
Take it for a quick spin around the block. And you have your seatbelt warning buzzer there telling you to buckle up. Said the light did light up, so maybe the <laughs> bulb just decided to go out. Operates like, operates like your normal automatic. You can see your gear select there. So we can shift to reverse. Drive. It has power steering, so it is easily maneuverable. And the small size of this van makes it very mobile and maneuverable in the city or for parking, things like that. So one of the reasons I wanted it, um, ease of use. This thing's actually pretty nimble. Um, this thing can get up out of its own way for sure. It can cruise highway speeds. I drove it three hours to Virginia without a problem. Cruise is nice. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video on the 1985 Dodge B150 Royal 8-passenger van. Uh, this thing is going to be my kind of new daily driver. Um, plan on taking on a lot of trips, using it to haul stuff, uh, haul people mainly, and um, have fun with it. So you'll probably see plenty of shots of this van in use on my Instagram, which be sure to check that out at Obsolete Automotive. Um, there's also a Patreon if you want to check that out. Obviously automotive as well, obviously. Um, there's behind the scenes footage, extra stuff that I'm working on. Things you won't see on YouTube that I'm going to post on there. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, be sure to check that out. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And feel free to share this video. Tell your friends if they like old cars that they might like to watch this channel. Um, like I said, I'm Austin. And thanks for watching Ops the Automotive, and we'll catch you on the next one.